Howdy mappers, welcome to another <coughs> live mapping session. So, yes, you all know what this is all about. Golf has gone away again and suddenly I find myself here. So, if you miss Ralph, you just have to miss him a week or two more. But today, hopefully I have something nice for you. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> talk a little bit about uh, creating an underground map. I'm actually going to draw a modern subway map. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of extra fun. So, I'm thinking, let's just get started. So, a subway. Well, that sounds like a modern kind of map, right? So, let's jump right into it and go for a modern floor plan map, actually. <clears throat> Why am I picking floor plan? Subway doesn't really sound like a floor plan but it's just the way the templates are categorized all uh, the floor plan plan here really just uh, refers the scale of the map a floor plan uh, scaled map is uh, an appropriate size for yeah basically drawing floor plans on so it's a floor plan map and i'm gonna do it in the symbol set modern bitmap a file this is uh, made by the artist john roberts and it contains some nice modern symbols you have seen me using this style before actually because it's the same style i used for my first live mapping so <clears throat> i'm just going to draw a small map with one subway station and a subway rail line so it won't be that big of a map so it, it's going to be 300 foot wide by 100 oh sorry by 200 and <clears throat> for the background um, uh, you may know that uh, when you look at if you go to a subway station and you will look at uh, look at the subway lines it's usually uh, gravel beneath the actual line so i'm just gonna put gravel at the bottom of my map as the background there most of it will be covered up by other things but it's just a game to start so map put it documents folder and I'm gonna make my subway map. There we go. Nice gravel. We need anything more? Well, I guess we need the actual subway. So my main idea, my idea here is to just uh, basically draw a subway line like this, and subway station down here and let's go from there now <clears throat> let's go for it now the first thing i don't have a tool that lets me draw the subway line like i want them to be drawn i need them to be a bit uh, high quality because i'm gonna them quite close up so i need to make something that can look like an actually railroad line and not just uh, some simplification it will still be a bit of a simplification but um, we're gonna try to make it look a little bit okay so to start with we need to figure out how big is a subway car well in the vehicle section here should play the subway car here and now we have it one piece of subway so as we can see it's a bit bit large don't fit too much on this map but that's not the main point either it will just be a cozy little map 
corner and I'm gonna have a station down here so let me start by placing there we go because that's the basic for my subway now I need to draw the part of the actual lines I need to know where they go and I'm going to use a couple of commands here to be able to draw this properly so I'm gonna start by actually drawing a construction line and work from there so I'm going to do the things snap settings are good uh, what I'm looking for right now in my snap settings is that I need this construction line to go through the middle of these because I'm gonna draw the mid middle of uh, the railway first and as you can see from the dots of the grid these are aligned along the middle so I'm good for the grid setting I'm just going to pick a sheet for this and call it nails I'm not going to use all of these sheets, but <clears throat> we just let them be for now. Point ones. One. And a construction line is usually just something that I need to uh, have easily visible. So I'm going to set color. It is correct. You can draw it on the road layer. It's uh, Fine, so I'm going to use a smooth part to draw this. Uh, and I'm just going to start at the edge. And I'm first drawing a straight line. And <clears throat> one thing you might notice right now, it's quite difficult to see what I'm doing here. So I wanted this nice gravel background, but it will look nice in the end, but right now it's absolutely horrible to work with. So I'm just going to hide the background. I don't really need the background. We all know that there are, uh, <clears throat> there are uh, gravel in the background, but let me just work with that nicely. Oh. Place. Notice that I'm placing a couple of points here to make this ensure that the start is straight. Then I place one node here and here. And there we go. We have one nice little line. And that's the start for our railway. Of course, railway doesn't look like a pinkish line. So, my next step is to figure out how wide do these lines need to be. And I'm going to use the symbol as a reference point there. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to use the distance command to figure out what is the distance. Okay. I cannot use the snap points, of course, because if I just let this snap, it's impossible to put the distance to the edge of the carriage. I'm going to turn off snap. For second consideration, I have on snap. You can see I now have one point right here. I click that snap point, then turn snap off, and I turn auto on. Auto means orthog orthogonal and it means that it can only be straight up or straight sideways this ensures that I'm measuring straight up and hopefully you can see my crosshairs it depends a little bit on your own uh, quality of the stream your own uh, internet line how good you are seeing this but I'm aligning my crosshairs like this and as you can see, I'm trying to make it fit basically at the edge 
the carriage, but just a little bit on the inside. If we uh, bring up a picture of a real life subway carriage, we will see that the wheels are almost at the edge, but they are uh, just a little bit in from the outer wall or the edges of the carriage. So I am just going to measure to here. And we can see that my result is 2 feet and 11 and 3 quarters of an inch. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that that one quarter of an inch does not matter at all. And we're just going to call this a 3 feet. 3 feet. Let's just use that and hope it works out nicely. So. Now I have the midway through the actual uh, center line and I need the actual track. And I'm going to position those based on the midline by using the offset command. The offset command is used to draw a line at an offset to an existing line. And the great thing about the offset command is that it correctly interprets uh, bands and things like that. You might know that if you look at a real world railway or road that goes into a turn, then <clears throat> the tight line on the inner corner of the turn is smaller than the outer. If you just copy the line, you wouldn't get this effect properly, but with offset it handles that and it generates the lines properly. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go to draw, offset, I'm gonna pick one and okay now it asks for a distance see that on the command prompt and the distance was the distance we just figured out i wanted a distance of three and now it asks which entity to uh, offset so i'm gonna select this line and pick a side is where do we want to place this offset copy i'm gonna click of it and I'll click on the entity again, and I can click below it. Unfortunately, the preview doesn't update until we are done with the command or call read or manually, so I can't see the result right now. But if I now hit escape to finish the command, we can see the line. And hopefully, you can also see that the line now go quite nicely where I imagine the wheels would be. I'm quite happy with this. So, of course, if I look at um, the turn here, we can see that they are actually not smooth. Zoom in the top corners. So I'm just going to do right click, load, and I'm going to do a straight to smooth. We do that on these two lines we picked. Do it and we can see the lines immediately fix themselves and became nice smooth lines. Ignore the center line for now. So I think we have the layout now for how the lines will be. So let's just figure out how wide should this be. Well don't actually have uh, the solution in my head right now, but let's try something. And let's try making them. Is two inches too much? Two inches is clearly, and that's not two inches, that's two feet. Probably saw what I did wrong because the measurement is in feet. And you can also see that it has a hollow fill style, which is why it looks awful. Undo fixes that. Again. These are decimal points, so I'm just gonna make it 0 0.2 feet. That's not 2 inches, but 0 0.2 feet looks fine to me. And let's temporarily put this to solid. Okay, does this look okay? Is wide enough? 
too wide, but we're just going to go with them for now. And this pinkish color is obviously not what I want. Let's go into the fill style and see what we have here. Got my fill set. But I'm thinking some kind of metal. And metal rusty. Looks fine. Rusted metal. Okay, we can argue argue that uh, <clears throat> anywhere uh, that's his frequent use won't be rusty. But uh, well, I'm thinking this more like an infrequently rarely used place, so I'm just gonna make it looks more atmospheric. But normally the cars themselves would actually uh, remove the rust. Oh. Little rusty, and there we go. Great. We have some rail lines, but there's still one major thing missing from railroad, and that's the sleepers. I mean, if I bring up those are, and I just search for rail. And we look at an image and we can see right there there are sleepers all the way along the track. So I need to do some sleepers. And how can we actually do that? Well, I want to use a command called symbols along to actually place the sleepers along the center line. But there is one little issue with that, and that is I do not have a sleeper symbol, and the command is called symbols along. So I actually need to draw a symbol myself and then define this symbol before I can actually that command. So we go down here and to draw a sleeper. We must switch sheet because I need the sleepers to be on a different sheet. Sleepers. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think we can agree that the hollow fill is not the right one for the sleepers. So I am going to make them in concrete. Sleepers can be made in many kind of materials, but wood and concrete are quite common. Although I've seen recently some experiments with plastics and things like that, but I'm going for concrete. Okay, and I'm gonna use the box command. Auto, auto, and on snap. Okay, my snap grid is not good for this. I think I'm gonna need a one foot grid with one snap. This is nice. And there we go. That looks like sleeper to anyone. Well, good enough for me, I guess. The only thing is, well, <clears throat> we might need some effects. So I'm just gonna go in and Rails first. I'm gonna put on a lighter bevel. And we remember that the size of the rail lines themselves were just 0 0.2 uh, feet. So I'm gonna try 0 0.05 for this. And see if this looks okay. You can barely see it, but that's kind of the point. You don't want it to be too pronounced. Yes. Try to get that zero one, but I think that's oh zero point one looks okay. Zero point one. I'm not sure how well this will show up on the video because it's a tiny detail. Zoom in on it, of course. Well, let me horrible because it's pixelated but um, 
but I think it looks uh, looks decent enough. And then we need to handle the sleeper. Now, sleeper should be basically the same thing, just a bit more of a bevel size. So let's put that as 0.3 perhaps. <clears throat> and going for it. Always make sure the effects are in map units. Some of them defaults the person to view it and quite annoying. Uh, no, this is bad. Way too much bevel. 0.1. So I'm just trying here to find a good value. 0 0.15 perhaps. Let's go with that. We can change it later anyway. It's just uh, it's just a bevel in an, in an effect, so it won't be a permanent part of the symbol anyway. So what I need to do now is I need to define this sleeper as a symbol. And to define a symbol, we go to symbols, define symbol. I pick up the symbol and do it. And it asks me a few questions about the symbol. I want a name, a sleeper, and an origin. Now, for this exercise, the origin is extremely important. Because I'm going to align it, or many of them, along this line in the middle here. So I actually want it to be aligned at the center of the symbol. So that's a good starting point. Okay, we can see that it disappears. That always happens when you define a symbol. That's normal. But I can go to symbol, symbol manager, and here we have a little sleep. So fine. Now comes the next part. I need to align it along the center line. However, I did mention one thing. You can see there on the center line, it's not quite nice. This is actually a smooth part, but uh, it happens when you have too few nodes. So I'm actually just going to delete the center line now. And I'm going to go to tools, oh, sorry, to draw and offset. And the offset command. It remembers the distance of three from last time, so I can just hit enter. I select my entity and I pick the center. Again, there we go. You look, this is much smoother. So let me just save the map. I now want okay, open. Uh, I wanted to align the sleeper along the center line. So how can I do that? Well, we have the draw symbols along. Uh, now, <clears throat> the, the symbols in here might not actually be what you want. These are just from uh, the last symbol catalog I used. So I'm gonna hit rows. But I'm going to show you one interesting thing. The symbol I now defined is a part of my map. I did never save it to a symbol catalog. But the symbols along actually want to, want to use a symbol catalog. But there is a secret in uh, Campaign Cartographer. And that is symbol catalogs and maps are just the same thing. No big difference really. So if you look here, I only am able to select a symbol catalog, but if you remember map files have the extension dot And if I just type that into the file name dot that's actually setting a filter in my map. However, I can select my map, I can hit open, and it now uses my map as symbol catalog. And here we are, 
Here we have the sleep. Okay, I'm just gonna go do one thing now. I'm gonna just cancel out. Save the map. Just there is a small chance for crash when I do this. So I do symbol along, take the sleep back. And which angle do I want to? Well, I want them to actually follow the origin of the line. So it's this middle one. Uh, I want to place, yeah, yes, I can. The scale is important. Here I said that I'm going to start with a scale of 100. The center will be a scale of 100, and the end, the scale of 100. And the point. Uh, with this is that when you do symbols along you can have the symbols get smaller and bigger as they go along the line but you don't want that with sleepers I want them to be the same size all the way to the end that's why they start at 100% they're still 100% at the midway through the line and 100% at the end now, I'm not sure the exact distance I want, but let's try with uh, the uh, three feet between them. And I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to select the center. And yeah, I think that looks absolutely perfect. I think the distance is nice. If we go to a real world picture, they might actually be a bit more closer together but that can quickly look bad in a map if they are too close so i think the actually fine so that means that we have now completed the first part of our map we have completed the railway line we can see here how nice these align in the turn all the way along the railway and uh, that brings me to one question which uh, Sue sent me. Uh, <clears throat> she asked me when I started with a smooth line, why did it turn into a straight line? Well, the answer is it never did turn into a straight line. But if you draw a smooth line and the curves are very large, this is quite a large uh, curve, several hundred feet in diameter, then campaign cartographers sometimes have issues making it properly smooth. So it will actually look uh, like when we looked at it and look a bit straight. You can see if I use info and list this one, you can see that the new one has actually 33 nodes. The original line that I uh, drew only had something like uh, five nodes or something like that. So all these additional nodes is what basically also ensures that it's nice and smooth. Okay, so this is the first part. I'm now going to quickly draw my uh, station down here. And the station is just a rectangle. So I'm gonna pick some kind of uh, files or something like that to uh, draw it. Oh, oh. I think I want plain concrete files. So, okay, and I'm going to pause it. There might actually be a drawing tool here. Uh, as you might notice, I'm notoriously uh, bad at using the existing drawing tools because I usually won't know what I want. There we go. We have our concrete tiles one floor, so we can use that instead of doing everything manually. I'm actually going to go back to the two and I'm gonna draw a nice little polygon. 
this is um, <clears throat> this is uh, railway station and I need a wall wall there as well wall gray brick one foot uh, the useful things about using drawing tools is, of course, they will select sheets and things like that automatically instead of when I try to do things manually like I often do, I have to set the sheets and everything myself. Especially if you're unfamiliar with uh, the program and the sheets and everything, how everything works, using the built-in drawing tools is a much better idea than doing everything yourself because there's a much higher chance that you're actually going to miss something. So, I'm just gonna go the wall like this. Uh, first thing looking at that wall, I already hate the shadows of it. Because, well, the inside here, well, actually, this is where you're going to find all the lights in this subway station. It's on the inside, so it won't be shadows here. And the outside. Is really going to be outside dirt. There shouldn't be any shadows there. And I actually want to set up lighting effects if I have the time. So I'm actually just going to the walls and I'm gonna just drop this. We don't need it. So this is the railroad station. Uh, I'm not going to detail this much right now <coughs> because there's some a few more things I want to do first and um, show you and it's not without reason that this uh, particular live stream is called uh, subways and dungeons sounds like a game doesn't it come to my place for a nice game of subways and dun dungeons well one of the things I wanted to do was to make this map combine several styles. So, what style can I? Well, as you might have remembered, and I pointed out earlier, the symbols here are drawn by John Roberts. And, well, we do have a nice little style called John Roberts Dungeons as well. Why not throw in a nice little dungeon? And now comes difficult. Well, not that difficult really, but the part where you need to do some manual steps. Because if I just click the DD3 button right here, I do have some symbols, but well, this is not John Roberts at all, is it? This is uh, uh, the standard dungeon style, and I need the John Roberts symbol. And I also need the John Roberts tools, because if I click all dungeon drawing tools, right now it's trying to give me the symbols at three floor plan A ones, which makes sense. That's the kind of map I am making after all. But I'm going to switch to Dungeon John. Ooh, but what's happening here? All the floors, or all the drawing tools actually have the floor fill. Well, this is because when you make a map style in Campaign Cartographer 3 Plus or use one of the existing styles in Campaign Cartographer 3 Plus, it comes with a set of fills built into the map. And those are the fills suitable for the tools intended for the map. That is, these tools. This map is not set up to use the dungeon and Robert's tool. So these tools does not work out of the box. We need to do something to make them work. Uh, fortunately, that's quite easy. Just remember, I'm going to do John Robert Dungeon. So, I'm going to close this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new instance of Camping Cup 3 Plus. And I'm going to start a new map in Dungeons 
in mural young robots style and i'm not gonna bother about the settings and i'm just gonna save it as and now i have made basically what's a blank map now i just close it i go back to my uh, modern map and i go to draw insert file and i'm gonna pick this temporary file i just placed there pick it and i'm gonna click open we can now see you can barely see the outline of the map at my cursor it can be real difficult to see i have problems seeing it myself but it doesn't matter you don't need to see it but you can see that the command line reads place but instead of clicking to place it i'm just going to hit the escape button and what actually happened here was that once i picked this file for insertion it actually copied over all the fill styles from this map so i made this new blank map just as a template to get the fill styles but i'm not actually going to use that map for anything but if i now go to all dungeon drawing tools which to dungeon john roberts ooh, voila all the drawing tools are here the fills everything ah this looks nice doesn't it so now i have a map with the fills set up for two different styles john robert dungeons and the symbol set both of these tools now work so this is the procedure if you want to use tools from a different style in your map you just have to insert it like that but just remember i never placed it once i had it on my cursor ready to place i just hit this yeah now we can go and use the dungeon tool use the dungeon room tool and it's already set up for me with the correct fill styles but if not you can just uh, pick whatever fill styles you want there and my point of importing the john robots styles was that i wanted to use these for the dungeon so two dungeon rooms map. and <clears throat> and three small rooms and i use the corridor tool to draw corridors between them uh, if you used this tool before you know that i now have to press the b button to connect to an existing wall that's so on my uh, command prompt there press b to connect to and break an existing wall so if i hit b it will try to select the nearest wall and i hit b again and that's like this one do it again down here another tool i hit b and select here and b and select redraw control r or redraw and we now have a nice little dungeon a uh, john robert's dungeon and i also want this dungeon to be somehow connected a little bit to my, <coughs> to my rails here don't i just leave it uh, unbroken so i'm just going to I have a nice little tool Dungeon A we can make this circle shape of and the cave I'm drawing now will basically be the walkway. Yeah.
between these two points. Okay, there we go. Okay, and well, we have a wall here and we have a cave, so perhaps we should break a hole in our wall so actually the cave can lead in to, uh, to the dungeon. So I'm going to use the break tool. Little break tool right there. But right now there are a lot of things in the same area here and I want to ensure I break the walls and not the floor beneath it or this cave actually. So I'm just going to hide the floors. I'm not sure on which sheet. Ah, it's on the floor sheet. Thank you. And I'm just going to hit the break tool. I'm going to break this wall. Click on it. I'm going to start my break here. And I'm going to end my break here. And we have a break. Let's put the floor back in. Voila. Yeah, a small gap here, but we can cover it up with some rocks and stuff like that. So. The last thing I need to go get to know is the John Roberts symbols. Because, well, these are still the D3 symbols. So, I need to load the John Roberts symbols. I can just open symbol catalog like this and uh, find it. Roberts. And I can just open the symbol catalog and get to it. That might be the easiest in some cases. But uh, I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to show you how to do this properly. And right now, we can right click, you know, the symbol style toggle button. I click it to toggle to different styles but none of the styles I want to toggle to are so let's figure out something let's figure out what the filter for John Roberts is called so I'm just gonna right click to master filter settings and I'm gonna load myself a master these filters here are what the simple style toggle uh, switches through I'm gonna explain well, it takes too, long, too much time, but I can load one of these filters. And if you remember, the John Roberts is annual issue 54. So I'm going to find CA54. Open it as 54. There we go. And I'm actually going to do something interesting. I'm going to set this to use two filter. DA54 is the John Roberts symbols. But we have the symbol set three symbols. They are SS3A, if I remember correctly. And I now have two sets of filters. One for John Roberts and one for. So this is a bit difficult. So if you don't figure out how to do this, use the open symbol catalog as I just shown you, of course. But look what happens now if I click the symbol catalog setting. All the nice little symbols at uh, CI54. Save. I can click the symbol style toggle button. And it now toggles to the SS3 style. It defaults to the same type of catalog cave. There are none. Just this star and now, and this is all symbol set three. Now I can now actually just toggle back and forth between these symbols in an easy. So I'm gonna go to cave and do yeah. Up, down, down, up. 
just make it look like it has been broken down here. How about that? Well, I could just have changed it a little bit, of course, the, uh, the cave fill, but there we go. I'm just gonna do this real simple right now. It looks like a collapsed section of the wall. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, collapsed wall section right here. At the end of the game. Of course, I don't have a wall here just yet, but that's to come. But uh, let's put some debris. So oh, this is starting to look like uh, a good start. Of course, I could put in a lot of symbols. Right now, I've just made the structure of the map. This map is missing a whole lot of decorations, a whole lot of symbols, a whole lot of things. So um, we still have a far way to go because before this is a complete map. But we do have uh, a very good starting. So now I want to actually draw my cave walls around here. If I turn on the background again, which I turned out ages ago, we can see that it's covered in gravel, and that's not what I want. I want some kind of wall. And to do that, I actually want to have some kind of drawing tool and I do have some drawing tools I can make my own drawing tools or I can use one existing one which I already prepared earlier which is called the cave walls can we have a look at the cave walls my cave walls tool is basically just a fractal drawing tool with a dirt grey uh, fill put on a sheet called cave. I made my own tool here because I needed a tool to go on a custom sheet uh, because this cave of mine here will actually be the walls. The cave I drew here just earlier is actually the floor of the cave where you're supposed to go but then I want to draw in the walls. So I'm going to use this. If we want to make your own tool like this, just basically selecting one of the existing tools, hit the new button, call it Cables 2. This creates a copy of the original tools you started with. And then you can just change whatever you need to change. For example, if I wanted this to be grass instead of dirt save and voila i have my own so creating your own drawing tools is super simple just find one that has the shape and functionality you want and then just change it so i'm going to use this cave walls for now and the reason i'm making a drawing tool instead of using the no custom uh, or standard drawing uh, tools uh, the basic ones is that drawing tools have this nice possibility of stopping at the map border and right now i'm gonna draw a lot of things up against the map border so let me use this cables yeah zoom a little bit in i'm working here and i'm just gonna start outside the map border and this is a fractal tool, so it should give me a little bit of uh, a definition. I'm just going to actually draw it on top of this cave thing right there. And I now come to these walls. I theoretically could 
use the trace functionality, which you have seen before, the trace around the walls, and you, Ralph used it in the ancient uh, ancient uh, dungeons thingy uh, a couple of weeks ago. But the problem I have now is that these walls are not one single long walls. They are broken up with the corridors and everything. But my cave is going to be placed on a sheet below the walls anyway. So instead of bothering to trace and take this too seriously, I'm just gonna click. Yeah, we had a crash. That's not fun. Let's go for the auto save drawing and let's see where we are. That's why auto save is a very, very important feature. Sometimes things just crash. And you just have to live with that. But I always use the autosave, so I always have a file to recover to. And as you can see, we I didn't lose anything. I was just about to start drawing. Just go save as and put the autosave drawing on top of uh, my drawing instead of continuing to auto save file name there we go and going to save walls and let's go back quickly Would spend some time making this a bit more perfect but the main point is that the cave edge should hide itself below the wall and not extend onto the floor beyond it if that's difficult just make shorter segments Vector won't be as large. Two more. And make sure that I don't get too close on the railway lines. There should be. Go, there we go, and there we go. Okay, I don't have any effects on this one just yet, and you can see that the cave, as this was a new sheet, I didn't have a sheet for the cave on before, so I just need to move that up. I wanted it to be below the walls. Okay, and go. Nice where we want it, but right now it doesn't really look like a wall at all. So there's one thing I need to do with uh, this one, and that's making it look more like a wall. And how can we do that? Well, if any of you said bevel, that's the correct answer. So I'm gonna put heat effect and bevel. Let's see the point. Five units and fine and there we go. Uh, the factorization could have been a bit more perhaps, and I was a bit sloppy there as you can see, but yeah, I'm not going to bother too much about it. What I don't like is that this pattern repeats way too much right now so i'm actually just going to dirt gray and i'm gonna change the scale of it let's multiply it by 10. there we go change the scale of the fill it's now much less repeat now changing the scale of a fill like this might 
or the campaign cartographer automatic resolution system a bit because as you might know campaign cartographer use four different image files for each fill in different resolutions and automatically picks the best one to show if i change the scale a lot like i did here that might actually put it off a little bit so if i click here display speed settings and click fill style resolutions normally just dividing these numbers by two is a fine start might need to do a little bit more but i i think i need Five, 10, basically the, what these numbers do is basically telling campaign cartographer when to use the different quality levels i could have just hit fixed bitmap and very high but that actually hit performance a little bit because it forces campaign cartographer to always use the best quality ones even when not needed but here we go now this looks much better so I actually want one more of these. So let's go a table again and yeah, how about this? And Doing the same the dungeon walls trying to stay just below the wall here and short segments so it doesn't you can also hit space in the middle to re-randomize if you like outline and there we go nice little subway tunnel so there's still a lot of do to do in this map in the case of symbols and things like that to make it uh, a nice little map uh, but i realized that uh, i have run out of time right now so uh, I could probably go on for another hour but uh, i don't really want to do that i think i've shown you guys um, quite a lot of different things uh, today and show you how to use uh, <clears throat> use the offset tools to be able to draw things like rail lines how to you to create your own symbols and use them with um, the symbols alone command I've shown you how to use uh, different uh, map styles in one map in this case the dungeon and the uh, uh, modern in one map so i think i've shown you most of the techniques i wanted to show and i'm just going to show you now uh, the final map i did prefer prepare uh, up front and so we can just see how this can look in the end. So start a new campaign cartographer and I put up my subway map right here. So this is a complete version of the subway map. Um I wanna use the what other day. And as you can see here, I have uh, done things like uh putting a bit more symbols uh, to make this actually look more like a railway station uh, i've used uh, symbols in the dungeon to uh yes dragon skeleton and things like that and i have used the camping cartographer lighting system let's just show my light there we go the access shows 
where I've placed my lights. And as you can see, I have in the bottom here placed some bright white lights, some less bright yellow lights along the line, uh, some more orange reddish lights in the dungeon, and just that mystic purple light. I don't really have time to show you now how to set up all of these lights because uh, I need to, to make this work properly. I need to set up uh, some extra light blocking entities. Because when you set up lights in Campaign Cartographer, uh, an entity like this, uh, like the cave for example, blocks the light at the far edge of the entity, but it lets the light light up the entity itself. So I need to set up some extra blockers along the walls to actually block the light and not have it flow into the walls. So I uh, think I'm just uh, going to stop right there and I hope you enjoyed this live mapping session. And I will also be here next week so uh maybe we can find something fun then too so are there any questions any last minute uh, things before we call this for today interesting thing when asking for questions of course is there is a stream delay so when i every time i, I ask you for questions i have to sit there for about 30 seconds to wait to see if anybody actually has something to say it's quite funny actually and then you suddenly see me sit right so but i think that's all so i'm just going to say thanks for today uh, thanks for watching i hope you learned something and happy mapping <laughs>